research is coastal environmental engineering. So basically, uh, my team tried to develop uh, the various types of environmental technologies, especially uh, the biotechnologies for the coastal contaminants mitigation types of things. Okay. So, uh, you know, we have so many needs. For example, um, after the BPO is built, um, the government industry feel that uh, we should have uh, extended toolbox to prepare for any types of marine oil spill. Mm. And uh, our lab, we try to um, like screen or isolate some uh, micro uh, the microorganism strains from uh, the Atlantic Ocean. So this, those strains have the uh, capacity of producing some unique structures of uh, bioproducts. So we treat them, uh, we call them the next generation spill treating agents. Okay. So they have different structures and they have different features. They have different application fields. So uh, we're working on that part. We try to uh, help um, all our stakeholders, all the responders, with uh, some new tools, and uh, that is the example. Uh, another example is, uh, you know, uh, for the, for, for example, for the offshore oil exploration, uh, we um, sometimes we um, have a certain phenomenon we call it a soaring, so the reservoir soaring, which means there's an opportunity that uh, in the reservoir under some unique uh, conditions, um, we have H2S generation mm -hmm. because of SRB, the sulfate okay. reducing bacteria. So we want to control the race, we want to control the growth of the SRB. So our team, we try to use the NRB to try to promote the growth of uh, nitrate reducing bacteria okay. to inhibit the growth of uh, the SRB. So we have multiple ways technology to try to balance those, uh, the structure of the microbial communities in the environmental system. And also we have some other types of emerging contaminants mm -hmm. like microplastic, flame retardation materials. Uh, we have uh, some uh, like uh, personal care and pharmaceutical products. So uh, they exist in the uh, coastal communities, So uh, especially in the water. So we try to find ways to, to treat them. I, I can just like, I wanna try to catch them through too many topics now. So if we we'll start with the, um, the byproducts that um, uh, your lab is producing. So can you elaborate a little bit what kind of uh, byproducts that you have? So um, they are the bio-based spill trading agents. Okay. So they put them into the different categories. For example, we have, we call the bio herder, sure. bio dispersants, okay. like bio emulsifiers, like biodemulsifiers. So they can be integrated with different engine technologies. For example, the uh, bio herders can be integrated with the, we call it the incidental burning yeah. to burn the oils. The function of the bio herders is they can thicken the, like let the oil slicks to shrink within a short period of time to thicken it and so that the, they will have a higher burning efficiency. Yeah. For the dispersant, we spray the dispersant to the surface of uh, you know, the, the, the seawater so they can, with a very short period of time, to uh, decrease the particle size and increase their solubility. So uh, they can dissolve in the water and the microorganisms can uh, further degrade them. So the, we need to make sure the product can uh, disperse the volume effectively. Meanwhile, to facilitate or enhance the biodegradation process to eventually mitigate those, those contaminants. And for the bioemulsifiers, normally we integrate it with a technology called the washing. So the, for the coastal washings, yeah. if, uh, if we have contaminants reach the shorelines, we need to have the washing techniques to remove them. And biodemulsifiers is used for the oil water separation. So if you have oily contaminated water, yeah. so you need uh, the ways to break the emulsions to very effectively to uh, you know separate oil phase and the water phase so that is the the you know the products uh, yeah, works. I can see that I can see that you are very excited when you are talking <laughs> about them but the question are they in 
in the lab stage or they are commercial stage now? Uh, what is the scalability if they are still in the lab? So for the application of those uh, products, you need to get the, the approval from the government agency. They okay. have the protocols to, uh, uh, to deal with that. So normally, like once we finish the lab skills, so we're right now in the pilot skills. So we have, we have big tanks. So we can uh, monitor uh, different types of uh, the real world scenarios, environmental conditions, and to check uh, the performance and efficiencies of each types of products and uh, the different uh, the various as the scenarios. So we are at this stage, and we also at the stage of uh, like pilot studies of uh, oh. the bug production of uh, the products. So those are the things we are doing. And uh, we also work closely with uh, our partners, the uh, stakeholders. Hopefully, uh, we can, uh, based on the very comprehensive findings uh, in the future, we can get the products to uh, be the candidate yeah. to get it approved and then to be applied to the field. So, You mentioned that you are working closely with your partner. I would yeah. imagine their industrial partner. So, you know, we, should, we normally work with both um, the policy makers because yes. it's related to the, you know, all types of regulations. So we have uh, the responders, like yes. Coast Guard, for example, the policy makers like DFO, ECCC. We also have uh, the industry partners. Yes. Uh, so uh, we work tightly together because we really need input uh, of uh, uh, one and another to put all the pieces together. But I would imagine this is a, a very challenging uh, kind of work to work with the policymaker, industrial partner, and the receiver. Yeah. So, h how do you see the differences when you are dealing with those three entities? So, uh, like people has their own jobs, and they have the different. I should say not so different, but the, you know because the goals are different. So sometimes the ways they think things are slightly different. So normally I feel that those difference are the valuable part for a single project because okay. they can learn from each other to put things together. So we need to have a very good strategy to work with each other. For example, I uh, conducted a um, project under the, the OPP, the Canadian Ocean Protection Plan. Okay. So under the OPP, they have, uh, uh, they call it the MPRI. This is a multi-partner research initiative. Okay. So the MPRI project uh, is very unique because they bring all the, all the partners together. So for example, for my project, we have a steering committee. So within the steering committee, we have all those key persons, all those stakeholders, responders, government officers, we have the industry partners, we have the researchers from industry. Mm -hmm. So we regularly like report the, and analyze the funding together. Mm -hmm. So we ensure we understand all their needs, any difficulties in the field, the technical challenges in the lab. So we help each yeah. other to build uh, those, uh, they call it capacity, all the, the new toolbox. I feel this is ways, uh, it's not just uh, like one to another, it is the interactive, interactive uh, working style. It's very functional. It really helps uh, everybody to eventually you know, to uh, advance the, the science part. Thank mm -hmm. you.